record button. So thank you for allowing me to interview today, Alex. Uh, it's my understanding that you're about to go on tour as a supporting act for Robert DeLong. Uh, how did this opportunity come about? Um, that's a good, I mean, I'm always looking for uh, tours and things for us to get on the road and different opportunities like that. I uh, pretty regularly scour all of the Austin concerts going on. I saw he was playing Scoot In, and then I saw the remaining things going on, and uh, we have some mutual friends with his label, and so we just kind of started the conversation there and was able to work it out. Awesome. And so you guys are based out of Austin, Texas, I believe, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's that's a pretty good way of like getting the, the tour started off with a bang. So it's going to be yeah. local for you guys? You don't have to travel to get to the first stop? Uh, well, no, no. Uh, Austin's actually the last one. So oh, okay. I, I misread the, the, the listing. My bad. That's all good. We're driving to El Paso tomorrow, which will be a real fun eight and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. Hopefully safe travels and everything like that. So. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, so how would you describe your actual live show and any surprises in store for fans attending the fall tour? Uh, how would I describe the live show? Um, you know, we, we're first and foremost a, a rock, an alternative rock band, so that, that would be the majority of how I would kind of blanket describe the show. Um, of course, we use a lot of different electronic elements as well that we're incorporating into the show. Um, but, you know, it, it is a live alternative rock show. Um, I, I sp- with, uh, with Robert, you know, we're going to be bringing some new music. We've been working on uh, some new music and new releases here over the last, I want to say, six months, which would be our first release since our debut EP. Mm-hmm. Um you know, those, those are going to come out in 2019, but we are playing them live. So anyone that wants to hear what's about to come out, we'll be playing those. Uh, with Robert, we'll be playing, I believe, about, well, I know with Robert, we'll be playing two new ones unreleased, but, you know, that we've never played in front of people before. Uh, and then it, with our headlining shows later in November, December, and January, we'll be doing probably four or five brand new ones that no one's really ever heard before. So we're... We're taking some some risk, but we're really just getting our new stuff out there and kind of uh, guinea pigging it and all that kind of good stuff. All right, that sounds great. Uh, tell yeah. me a little bit about what it, what went into uh, for shooting the music video for Bones, and yeah. uh, who directed it, and how pleased were you with the final product? Yeah, it was directed by this guy Philip Lopez, who's uh, out of LA. Um, that one is actually something we filmed a while ago uh, unintentionally, and then it ended up not coming and then it, we, we filmed it i believe second and then it ended up coming out last um which is just kind of the schedule of having singles and you right. know, all that kind of <laughs> stuff that really i try to pay less attention to as i go on but um no i mean the video turned out great it was uh, a very strenuous um film shoot day because we were in this abandoned mall the uh, hawthorne plaza in la and um you know they do a lot of they film a lot of Cool stuff there and at the time when we did it the uh the claim to fame was uh gone girl and fast and furious and right. since then since we filmed there this is how long ago it's been they've now uh done westworld there and taylor swift did a video there and travis scott did a video there and um you know it's, it's been pretty cool but you know i had my my helmet on the entire time and <laughs> you can't you can't actually breathe in that thing so every <laughs> Every 20 or 30 seconds, we'd have to call cut, and I'd have to pull it off, cause, not because I couldn't breathe, but because it would fog up, I couldn't see. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so Philip was very patient with that, and uh, you know, we obviously got it done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it seems like that's like the go-to now for music videos, or even for films these days, is abandoned malls, which seem to be happening more and more with the Amazons of the world and stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah, there's a couple of them now. Yeah, I think, uh, and, like, near me, there's one in, um, I think, Alexandria, uh, where they're shooting, like, the new Wonder Woman, so, the, like, the new, like, the mall there. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but anyways, um, who designed the album artwork for the self-titled EP uh, entitled Culture Wars? Yeah, it's uh, Gary Dorsey. He's a guy uh, here based out of Austin. He's uh, done a lot of different stuff. I think he's done some work for Calio and... He did the uh, Missio records, and um, I believe, I'm pretty sure, and no, he did, yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, I, now you think about, uh, like, I actually uh, own that Missio album. That was one of the things that came to mind. I was like, I wonder if that's the same artist, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's Gary. He's a uh, you know, I've, I've we've known him for I guess almost two years now, and he's been 
designing t-shirts and all sorts of stuff for us. He's, he's cool. Cool. And any favorite moments from that record that stand out to you from the, the self-titled? In terms of... Oh, the music, or, the musical content or the packaging or anything else? I mean, that, that thing was something we worked about a year and a half on altogether. Um, well, I would say developing this band was we spent about a year and a half working on, like, trying to figure out, you know, because the first song we wrote was Lies, and we were just like, okay, what band is this? And you have to kind of... <laughs> you know, start writing more stuff because, you know, we liked it so much. So, right. um, you know, it was it was all one big collective thing and I think it was, the whole thing as an experience as a whole was really uh, great and kind of, you know, not that Nick and I and David weren't close before, but we obviously became closer even more so, um, even though we had known each other for three years before that, but, you know, spending a lot of time together, writing together, kind of going through that process you know you, you get you become closer friends and you and you learn a lot about yourself and your writing and you know that's that's a process that really never ends but especially in the initial stages it's you know you, you kind of feel like you're you know digging for gold and just trying to shovel dirt out of the way as you, yeah. <laughs> you start looking for stuff and then hopefully you hit something solid you know <laughs> yeah so how has how your kind of songwriting process evolved since then like since the creation of that EP that you said took about a year and a half to kind of get it all, all the pieces working together. How, how, how have you guys evolved since then? Uh, you know, the sound evolves on its own just because uh, for us, we all listen to different things and you, know, you, you, you get older and you get into different things and you hear records and hear new records and things just kind of change your mind. But in terms of our writing process, it's, it's relatively the same. I would say that um, with the help of our producer, we've learned to be a lot more uh, independent uh, you know, basically together, not needing to be in a studio. We can work off our laptops. We can work at our producer's house. We very rarely go into the studio unless it's at the very, very end. And we're like, okay, we need to track drums and we need to get a good sound on the amp and stuff that, you know, you can't do on a laptop. Um, but that's, that's enabled us to write more and record more because obviously it's cheaper, just, you know, frankly, um, and it's allowed us to be creative more. So, you know, it's like the old Neil Young quote, and I'm going to paraphrase it here, but <laughs> you, know, you got to kind of cast, cast the line out there like you're fishing every day, you know, and, and you're, you're bound to catch something. So yeah. for, for us, we're just putting in more and more time and just really sinking in, sinking our teeth in. And about how much material have you guys come up with for the new record? So, um, as always, we always have, you know, we'll complete, somewhere in the ballpark of 25 to 50 different songs or ideas or whatever you want to call them. And this is over the course of, you know, six, eight months or whatever, whatever it is. Um, for now, you know, we're, we're looking at, um, you know, a single that we're looking to put out, uh, in early in the year and a follow up to that, uh, a follow up single to that. And then we kind of go from there. I mean, for us, because we're not on a label, we can kind of make our own decisions. We really just go with, you know, what's what's the best thing we got? What can we not live without putting out? And, and that's what we, we do it, just quality over quantity. Um, especially because people only really have the attention span for a couple of songs anyway. Right. So with that, you kind of, I guess, do you kind of like pick and choose the best ones or do you kind of look for a cohesive, you know, direction? Or how do you uh, take, take that well, approach? Uh, the, the cohesive direction is really just like the band, you know, mm -hmm. so for us, it's about good songs and what we feel is the best material. And if it's, hey, you know, we're going to put out this one song because we think it's just great, then that's mm -hmm. what we're going to do. And if it's, um, you know, well, we want to put out these two or these three, then great. Um, I, I would say, and this is something that, you know, I wish musicians didn't have to think about, but from like a marketing standpoint, you know, Spotify, you can only push one song for playlisting at a given time, in, in, at a given time per release. Right. So when you, if you put out two songs, and that means one song is going to get no attention and right. no marketing. So it's, so it's hard to be like, okay, we're going to, it, it, it kind of gives you the impression as if you're sending a pawn out into battle. And you, you just don't want to be doing that. Yeah, I hear um, So it kind of forces us to play that game, but it doesn't mean that we can't put out a song every month or something like that, you know? So we'll just have to kind of see um, how things are going. And again, we work off our own timeline, you know, um, but we are very excited to, to have uh, a single that we're, we're definitely ready uh, to, to drop at the, at the top of the year. Perfect. So what are your core influences that each, that each of you bring into this project? 
Well, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty wide ranging. Um, I would say, you know, what, uh, what Nick and I, uh, the guitar player, uh, initially connected on would be more of a Depeche Mode, New Order, uh, you know, New Wave kind of Manchester thing. Um, you know, but over time, we've all kind of started listening to all sorts of different things and get it gotten all over the place. Um, you know, and David always keeps us, well, David and Rob, our producer, uh, always keep us on listening to different pop stuff and trying to keep up with what's current, whether we like it or not. You know, <laughs> sometimes, it, sometimes it grows on you. You, know, yeah. you, know, you, can, you can have a wall up about it, and then you're like, oh, wait, no, this is great. I'm just, <laughs> you know, being snooty or something. But, um, but yeah, we, we're, we're, we're really all over the place. Um, I mean, I can, like, go through my iTunes and just... <laughs> <'cause we're really laughs> I mean, that's that's the, that's the only way I can do it because we, we run through so many different things. Um, like, we were rehearsing today, and while we were setting up, I think I played Travis Scott, 1975, and Ariana Grande or something. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of all over an eclectic the place. mix, but, yeah, it kind of still in the pop realm at that point, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, and then I think Mick was playing Kid A or something, but, okay. you know, um, so we're, we're all over the place, but that's that's kind of, I think, what most people are like, especially now. There's so much music and so much content that, I mean, why not, you know? Right. And that uh, that, that, tends, to, that tends to keep bands together is having a variety of influence rather than, like, saying, well, we're just going to play STP type stuff or whatever like that, you know, and then you kind of get burned like, out, yeah. Or we're just gonna make a Led Zeppelin record. Yeah, Greta Van Fleet did that. Uh, well, uh, so I've heard. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, um, so if you were gonna have a dream collaboration with another artist today, who would it be and why? So more kind of tying um, tying in with that other question that I asked about the influences. I, I would say, and uh, maybe the uh, one that we would all for sure agree on right away would be Mike Dean. Um, he's a well, he, he plays a lot of things, but he, he predominantly plays a lot of synthesizers and stuff like that. And he does a lot of work for Kanye and Travis Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, he's from my hometown of Houston. Uh, does stuff for Beyonce and stuff like that. Uh, he's just a very talented synthesizer person, and as as uh, as a band who really cherishes that, um, we definitely uh, stalk him on Instagram. <laughs> nice. And then uh, the final question I have, unless you have anything else to share, is uh, what would you like to share with your fans today and for the new fans you will likely acquire during the upcoming tour with Robert DeLong? Well, you know, the, the one thing really that we have to share is, is the show, is the music. So um, bringing in uh, that new music and getting ready to really enter the next phase, I think that uh, people that are going to have been listening to what we've been doing that are about to listen to what we're about to do um, are going to probably make that, you know, this is different, but this is definitely the same band. And I think that evolution and that acceptance is something that uh, I think everyone will be really into and agree with. And so I, I guess anybody that's ho hoping that we have new music, they better get some tickets and <laughs> <laughs> or they can wait till, you know, January, February. <laughs> right. For the headlining <laughs> ones, right? <laughs> yeah, but either way, you know, ready to uh to get this new stuff out there and, and we're excited for everybody to enjoy it cool so i understand the tour kicks off in two days from now yeah we uh because it takes an entire day to get to el paso yeah we're leaving we're leaving tomorrow but um but yeah we're doing el paso on wednesday and then we're going to san antonio thursday and then we're going to san Show on the 15th in Austin, which is also my birthday, so it's my birthday show. Cool, happy and, birthday! Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's a month away, but you yeah, yeah. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hear you. All right. Well, yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I had yeah, a great, great conversation with you, Alex, and uh, best of luck for.